Hi guys, Dan here, and I am back with another video. Since you guys really, really seem to enjoy the uh, laser sailing in strong wind video that I did reviewing the Aarhus 2018 medal race, I am going to do another medal race review video, but this time we are going to be looking at downwind sailing, and in particular, downwind sailing in light, choppy conditions. On the first uh, downwind laser sailing technique video that I did over here, um, I had a comment from one of the subscribers, David, who asked if I could do a video on downwind in choppy conditions. So David, shout out to you. I don't, don't know exactly if you meant light and choppy or windy and choppy, but we're going to start with light and choppy conditions. And we are going to review the 2017 here sailing world cup medal race where there is some really great footage of how in particular Pavlos Contitas who we saw in the last video uh, sails downwind in these conditions and these are conditions where he's definitely trained a lot in because these are the conditions that are very typical to split in Croatia where he trains and we also see a little bit of the techniques from Olympic gold medalist Tom Burton. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Alright guys, so I actually included or actually filmed another part to this video which I was going to include here where I basically go through this document that World Sailing released which covers their interpretations for Rule 42 and I specifically talk about how it relates to sailing the laser downwind in light conditions. So for those who don't know, Rule 42 is the sailing rule which covers uh, propulsion of the boat um, by rocking or pumping, for example. And I talked all about what these top sailors do to still accelerate their boat with their body and their sheet, but do so within the confines of Rule 42. And I was going to include it here, but if I did so, this video would probably be over 20 minutes long. So I decided that I'm going to send that video out to anyone who subscribes to my email newsletter. So if you hit the link in the description box, there is a link to go and sign up to my email newsletter. And as soon as you sign up, I will send you an email with the exclusive link to get the video talking all about Rule 42, how you can sail faster downwind and stay within the rules. So hit the link if you want to get that video and otherwise let's jump into the footage. Alright so since we want to talk just about the downwind in this video I've skipped ahead to the uh, end of the first upwind but before I start reviewing the footage I wanted to talk briefly about some of the points which I think are really crucial to going fast in these conditions. And I hope that by talking about them now, you guys will be able to pay more attention to them in the rest of the video. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how these guys, when they're sailing downwind, they are always alternating between sailing by the lee and sailing a sort of broad reach or sort of forward flow um, angle. So where the telltales will be flying in a normal direction. And that's important because um, they're basically never going directly downwind unless they're on a wave or in a really good gust. And going directly downwind in these sorts of conditions where you're not really surfing for that long is just really slow. So these guys will always be alternating between by the lee and a broad reach and use the angle changes in between to gain BMG whilst they're surfing or to actually help get on a wave. And the next really important part, part is that the rudder should always be following the steering of the boat. So a, a mistake that I see a lot of laser sailors make in these conditions is that they use much more rudder than they should be, or they try to initiate steering of the boat with the rudder rather than body weight. So the goal in these conditions is you steer the boat with your body first, and then once the boat's already starting to change direction, you let the rudder basically just follow the angle change of the boat. If, for example, you heel the boat to leeward and you want to head up, 
but you just kept the rudder straight and in the dead center, then you're creating drag still because the boat's trying to head upwards, but your rudder is staying in a direction whereby it should stay in the same direction. So the goal is to minimize drag from the rudder by letting it follow the uh, change of direction induced by the heel of the boat. And then the final point that uh, you should pay attention to is that these guys are always keeping constant pressure in the sail. So no matter what their um, angle changes, you'll basically never see the sail luffing. And if they're um, steering up, but for example, or like bear heading up, you'll see that they match their sheeting exactly to the angle change of the boat so that there's never a lack of pressure in the sail. And likewise, when they're bearing away, they're always just dropping the right amount of sheet that they need to so that the boat can stay at maximum power at all times. So now that I've spoken about those three points, let's get into the footage. So at the moment, we see Tom Burton is leading the medal race and uh, Pavlos is going to be quite close behind. And he's in second, Pavlos at the moment, overall, trying to beat the Italian sailor Francesco, who is who was leading going into the middle race. So now we're gonna get some pretty good footage of Pavlos here. Uh, the first thing that I want you guys to note is how Pavlos is sheeting directly from the boom. So what I call boom sheeting instead of block sheeting. So instead of taking the main sheet from behind the ratchet block in the cockpit, he's now switched to taking the main sheet directly from the final block on the boom. And in these sort of conditions where it's really light wind, that is going to be better for feeling the power in the sail. And I find that it also helps you pump a little bit better when you're changing direction for the waves. So particularly when you are easing the main sheet, you can get a little bit better of a drop pump. So when you're bearing away, you drop the sheet and then you catch it again and it causes the leech of the sail to flick. And also when you're um, pumping by heading up, when you sheet on with the sail and then the final pump as you're flattening the boat, you're, it feels like you'll get a lot better um, acceleration because the connection to the sheet or to the sail is just that much better and it's not being interrupted by the ratchet block. And then the other thing I also want you guys to notice here with Pavlos is his grip on the tiller extension. So you can see he's barely holding the tiller extension and he's gripping it very, very lightly, which means he doesn't need to force the rudder around with the boat at all. He can just hold the tiller extension really softly in his hand and when he steers the boat with his body weight, he just lets the tiller sort of follow the steering of the boat. And so you can see now how accurate as well he can be with the main sheet taken directly from the boom instead of from the ratchet block, constantly doing tiny little adjustments of the sheet. You'll see he makes tiny little steering changes and when taking the sheet directly from the boom, he can make small little adjustments which exactly match the steering of the boat. Also notice um, how deep his outhaul is here. So he's probably got you know, if you were to put your hand at the at the cleat on the boom, he's probably got at least that much outhaul depth, maybe even a bit more. So that's, you know, sort of mid forearm length if you're touching the sail with your fingers and your arms resting on the cleat. And so you see he does a really nice upturn here where he heels the boat over to leeward, lets it slowly come up. Whilst it's coming up, he's sheeting on all the time to match the uh, rate of turn of the boat and then once he's got to the angle he wants to get to he lets the boat come flat again and that's when he finishes sheeting and he gets a nice acceleration both from flattening the boat and from the wave that he's trying to catch and then once he's on the wave now he'll start bearing away again to gain some BMG and then go back to a by the lee fast angle so he's bearing away now, going downwind, and now he comes back by the lee. And once he's going bearing away to go by the lee, he's easing out the sail. And once he gets to the angle he wants to, and he's 
going for his final release of the sail, he'll let it out, catch the main sheet, and then that will cause the sail to flick again, which will give him another bit of acceleration. And so you'll see constantly trimming the boat to adjust for the waves and, and maximize his VMG, maximize every gust that he's got um, whilst going downwind and turn that into distance downwind. And the other thing to note here is just look at this um, group. So Tom Burton who led around the top mark, you'll see he's on the far left of the group looking downwind and Pavlos is on the far right. So in these really light conditions where it's probably seven to eight knots at the moment, you basically want to follow the maxim from Stuart Walker, which is light wind favors the bold and basically trying to sail down the middle of the course with a fleet behind you is always going to be really, really difficult in these conditions. So you'll see the best guys, even if they're leading the race, they're separating out uh, to a side to try and sail in clear wind. And by doing that, they'll be able to go at their best speed. And then later down the run, they just need to pick an opportunity to work back towards the middle. So the important thing in this scene is to look at the vang tension. So you should be setting up your vang in these conditions so that every time you adjust the sail, you get a little bit of flick from the leech. So you don't want your vang so tight that the leech just stays dead straight. And you don't want the leech so open that it's just always like blowing open and um, releasing pressure from the sail. So you can see on Pavlos's setup here that the leech is a bit closed, but every time there's a wave or he changes the sheet, you can see the leech flicking there. And so that's probably going to be sort of 25, 15% of your maximum bang tension. And so the interesting thing to note with Pavlos's style um, compared to Tom Burton, who we'll see later, is that Pavlos sails what I call or what's known as a knees down style downwind here. So Pavlos has his back leg in the cockpit locked under the hiking strap and his front leg is sort of up against the centerboard case which is quite a different style to Tom Burton and you can pick either style really. Personally I always preferred uh, knees up which we'll see Tom Burton doing but being more locked in with the knees down style of Pavlos also has its benefits. So you'll see now big upturn and then once he's reached his angle, he sort of leans back a little bit into the boat to flatten it. And at the same time, he'll do one final pull of the sheet, which pumps the sail and accelerates the boat down the wave that he's trying to surf. And see how he gets this really nice wave now and he milks it downwind for as long as possible. And then once he feels his speed dying, he pulls the boat to windward and bears away to start going back by the lee and regain speed. So you'll see now he's doing a technique called pressing. So he's going by the lee, but he's not letting the boat heel over fully to windward. He's sort of pressing into the lure deck whilst the boat's by the lee, which gives it a bit better track downwind. And now when he wants to upturn, he just uses his body weight to start the lured heel. So here we see Tom Burton and you can see how he's doing the knees up style. So both of his knees are up and his, both of his feet are flat on the floor of the cockpit. And he's pressing pretty hard by the lee now, just trying to keep the boat flat, keep the leech flicking and driving hard by the lee. So we've just finished the first downwind and I'm about to jump forward to the second downwind. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far, please hit the like and subscribe button. That would help me out massively and I would really, really appreciate it. And with that over, let's go into the second downwind. All right, so they're just rounding the bottom mark, the top mark now for the second time, about to go on the last downwind. And we can see that at the moment, Francesco Marai is struggling a bit. Um, he's bit behind Pavlos and currently out of the gold medal position. So notice Pavlos's angles. He's rarely going downwind there, always switching between by the lee and broad reaching. And so you can see here, 
Um, when Pavlos is going by the lead, he probably has his boom at about a hundred degree uh, angle. So it's not dead square, it's a little bit beyond square, which in these conditions is perfectly fine. And you can see as well that Pavlos and nor Tom Burton in um, the previous scene have, they're not using or pulling up their center board that much. So they probably only pull up about that much center board. And what you'll find is if you pull up too much center board in these conditions, you actually start losing a lot of grip on the boat and it makes it much harder to use the boat or use the steering of the boat to accelerate down waves. So having a little bit more center board in the water gives the boat a bit better grip through the water. And then when you turn, you can sort of use the center board and um, pump off each um, direction change a bit better. So you can see Pavlos going hard by the lee now. If we just go back to that quickly, if we look at his telltales when he bears away, look at how much they're flowing towards the mast. So he's going hard by the lee there, and then he's about to upturn and go back towards a broad reach angle. So pretty big angle change. Like it's probably a at least a 40 degree angle change. Um, but they're making the most of it and accelerating every time they are uh, steering the boat. So we can see a nice upturn here from Pavlos, lots of sheeting. And if we can see, the rudder's really not changing that much angle. So the rudder, the tiller might be going sort of that far off the center line um, at any given time. So really just letting the rudder follow the boat and not having to force the boat around using the, the tiller. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. We've just finished the second downwind. Remember, if you want to see the part that I filmed earlier but did not publish in this video where I go through Rule 42 and how it relates to this video and how you can stay within the confines of Rule 42 when sailing downwind, make sure to head to the link in the description box where uh, you can sign up to my email newsletter and on the 13th of June, I will send out that video as a special feature for any email subscribers. And otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any other uh, laser sailing topics which you would like to get better at, comment below and tell me what they are. And I will do my best to try and find a, an appropriate video to use to help you guys improve. But otherwise, see you next time and thanks for watching.